Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. It's one o'clock on a Monday afternoon, so you must be watching Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Pete McInnes-Mark, and at this time we bring you science discoveries from the University of Hawaii, and today we've also got a really important message for all residents of Hawaii, because my guest today is Dr. Dennis Wan, who is a faculty member at the UH Sea Grant College Program at UH. And Dennis, we're going to talk about hurricane preparedness and how people in Hawaii can get ready for the coming hurricane season, is that correct? That is correct, and it's um, only a month and a half away. Scary so to think that June 1st is coming very rapidly, isn't it? That's right, and um, the, the National Weather Service should be making their forecast for the hurricane season for 2018 in, in less than a month. Right. Well, I believe that um, particularly given the really bad hurricanes which came through uh, the United States last year, this is a particularly timely opportunity for all residents of Hawaii as well as on the mainland to really start taking a, an inventory of what they have and what kind of structures they're living in. So I'm really looking forward to okay. today's show. Um, I believe, as the viewers can see, we actually have a number of uh, documents in front of us. Sure. Can you just briefly describe what we have here on the table? Okay. Well, here um, is the homeowner's handbook to prepare for natural hazards. It started in 2007. It's gone through nine print runs with 75,000 copies, and we're in the process of creating the fourth edition of the book. Okay, and then after the Hawaii book was done, you could see uh, the book is in 10 other states and countries or territories. And, and I believe that you and Darren Okamoto, both from Sea Grant, are the authors of this book? Of uh, this particular one, and then different Sea Grant programs took a lot of the material and adapted it to their state and countries. Nice. Each book is tailored to the hazard suite and construction style for right. that for their location. And Hawaii Sea Grant is such a wonderful program. We've had people like Katie Hinson on for the King Tides, and we've had other members, uh, Cindy uh, Natman, for example. Sure. So Sea Grant is quite a large program, as I understand it. Yes, and it's um, part of NOAA. People don't realize it's part of Which NOAA. Which is the National Oceanographic and Administration. And Atmospheric, Atmospheric Administration. administration. Yes. And there are 33 Sea Grant programs throughout the country. So our mission is to take information that's developed in the university, research, and, um, and we bring that out into the community. That's so this is really important stuff for any resident, not only homeowner, but someone who's renting property in Hawaii. Yes. Um, we hear a lot about sort of uh, have a supply of water uh, and food on board, but I think you're primarily going to talk about what hurricanes can do in terms of damaging our homes. Right. Now, the book does cover, like what you said, the emergency supplies, and I just want to mention very quickly, the new guidance is 14 days of non-perishable food and water. Uh, Which will be quite a challenge, particularly if we were without power for 14 days. Yes. How can we actually make it uh, last? But obviously, sort of uh, the survivability, as we've seen, I think you'll tell us about Puerto Rico, for example. This sure. is really important. Sure. And um, right, we did go down to Puerto Rico uh, to see some of the impacts from Hurricane Maria and also Hurricane Harvey to see the impacts in Texas. Right. And our major reason for going was to see how buildings performed and what we could learn and put into the fourth edition of the book to help people prepare. So when you're talking about how buildings perform under stress from a hurricane, are you an engineer? Are you a scientist? What's your background? I'm a scientist, uh, geology and geophysics by training. Okay. And I work with a lot of structural engineers and architects. Terrific. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, well, we mentioned some damage from the previous storms. I think if we can go first to the second slide, uh, if our image guy, here we go. So 
big hurricanes last year. Can you lead us through what we're seeing here is, I think, Puerto Rico and Hurricane Maria, correct? Okay, right. And here's um, Maria making an impact, and you can see the eye of the hurricane impacting the um, southeast portion of the island. And you can see that it's uh, the bands are circulating counterclockwise, and the eye is that blue area. Okay, and that's where the strongest winds are. So the colors might represent the wind speed? Of uh, in this skin. case, they're representing uh, rainfall. Okay. Amount of rainfall. Yeah, but, but the strongest winds are in the eye of the hurricane. And when the eye passes over you, initially it'll be in one direction and then in the uh, reverse and go in the other direction. And of course it wasn't lost on the, a lot of residents of Hawaii that Puerto Rico is an island. Right. It's in the tropics so there's a similarity between Puerto Rico and the damage they suffered and potentially what could go wrong here in Hawaii. That's exactly right. But, and it's interesting though because uh, Puerto Rico is an island, just like Oahu. Um, they, a lot of people think that our major lessons learned are from Puerto Rico. They are from Puerto Rico in terms of infrastructure and uh, businesses, but in terms of housing, we learn just as much from the impacts in Texas, too. So we'll show all of that yeah. very shortly. All right, let's move on to the next slide then, because you're mentioning some of the damage. Okay. What we're seeing here are some uh, very sick-looking palm trees. Okay, so. well, what's happened here is Maria has made landfall on this uh, section of Puerto Rico. The eye has passed, and the trees are blowing in different directions. So what's actually happened is uh, the eye passes, the eye wall passes, and the winds are blowing in one direction, and then it... Uh, the goes through the eye and then the, the wind reverses and goes in another direction. So you can see the strength of the winds and it's very unusual to see the, right. the, the trees and going. And I guess there. that is uh, something for us to recognize that it's our whole house, it's not just the house, side of the house. Right. Primarily facing southwards or eastwards that could be That's damaged. right, that's exactly right because that's a myth that you only protect, say, the south part of the, the house. You have every part of the house, 360 degrees, needs to be protected uh, because, uh, from a hurricane, because it could come in any direction. And presumably, it's not just the change in pressure, but it's also flying debris. And That's right. That, which That's right. Concerns, well, yeah. you'll see some of that. Uh, Great. Shortly. Well, let's, let's move on, because I know you've got a number of different examples to, to show oh. us here. OK. Um, we have lots of these things here on Oahu and on the Big Island as well. That's right. Yeah. And um, of course, everyone, when they think about Puerto Rico, they think about the impact to the infrastructure and specifically the power power transmission system. Um, and you can see some of the impacts here, just the very strong winds were able to shred the blades of this um, wind, wind okay. turbine. And um, all of the wind, tur most of the wind turbines on the south where Maria made landfall looked like this. They were in that really. condition. And, and so um, this is perhaps one reason why Puerto Rico is still having a lot of power problems even though it's six months after the storm. Like yes, that's one of the reasons. It's okay. mainly their source and then also their transmission system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the frailty of the power grid, presumably. Yeah. And, and the next slide, I think, should emphasize as well, as Hawaii is trying to go to being uh, completely energy independent or get off fossil fuels, what, what is it we're seeing here? Okay, we, we well, this is a good, another important lesson because um, you know, we always talk about sustainability and we want an adaptation, but we also want to be resilient, okay? So uh, the, the, the solar farm here, you know, is sustainable and adaptive. It's providing energy off fossil fuel, but it also needs to be strong also. So it uh, could withstand a hurricane impact. And um, for the homeowner's handbook, in the third edition at least, we do have a section on making sure solar panels on housing are attached properly to the roof so that sure. they don't fly off. Yeah. yeah. So we, we not only that. do you lose power, but you yeah. also have the 
projectiles going into your neighbor's house, which yes. could, and there, there's a yeah. lot of things which could go wrong there. But this really does raise an interesting issue yeah. in terms of how does Oahu or anywhere in Hawaii become robust and be energy independent? We've seen yeah. examples here. The wind farms could get damaged, the solar uh, power, the PV can get damaged as well. Right. And presumably also the, uh, the, the transmission lines are at risk as well. Right, and the, the key is to think of this all beforehand in the design yeah. and installation. Right, so you're thinking about sustainability, adaptation, and resilience, which yeah. is the part that makes everything strong to withstand uh, a hurricane. You know, whether how it's how well is it attached, and um, right, yeah. And, and you've got some other images of other damage. I think we're going to look uh, at buildings okay. which did survive. Yes, this was the main reason we went to both. Puerto Rico and Texas because we wanted to find out why some buildings did well and some just exploded. And it's very important because in Hawaii, when there's a hurricane, people will not be able to drive to another state. They have to stay in state and they have to go to a hurricane shelter or shelter in place. So um, there's limited shelters, so it would be preferable to get these shelter in place if it's strong enough. Now, why did you go to, to Houston? I would have thought somewhere like Guam, where there's a lot of concrete buildings, you could have learned the same information there. Uh, you'll see very shortly, because <laughs> actually, in terms of style construction, Houston, I mean, not Houston, where we went, we went to Rockport and Houston in Texas. Uh -huh. Rockport is actually closer to Hawaii than Puerto Rico in terms of it's all like the more the double wall, together. more asphalt shingle roofs, more hardy siding, and we we saw how those houses performed, and it gives us a good indication okay. of how they'll perform on Oahu. And so you've shown us some wind damage. Sure. Presumably there's a lot of rain as well. Sure. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, is it the rainfall that is the primary culprit in terms of damaging buildings? Uh, it's all. F there's the hurricane is multiple threats, uh -huh. and you each one by itself can be deadly, and then sometimes they all happen together, and it's equal. It's Real even problem. worse. I think your next slide will show us some of the uh, yes the, the the Houston damage. And okay, of this is Houston or Hot oh, okay. Hot. What actually is you're seeing here is Hurricane Harvey making landfall in Rockport, Texas. Um, so what's happening is um, it's going inland and then it encounters two high pressure systems and it kicks the hurricane out, uh, out into the Gulf again. And, the, and it the skulls over is, Houston. The coastline is the pink line, Yes. you mean land is to the left and it's, it's, oceans or the gulf is to the right. Yeah, so it stalls over Houston. So what we're trying to do here is we went to two places, Rockport to see the impacts of the wind uh -huh. and Houston to see the impacts of the flooding. And the next slide, I think, will show some of the, uh, the issues that we're trying to deal with the total amount of water, right? Right, Record. right. And um, Huge amounts. a lot of people in Hawaii, uh, they know about the tremendous amount of flooding over the last weekend on Kauai right. and even um, on Oahu. We, on Kauai, they received up to 28 inches of rainfall over a 24-hour period. And here um, in Houston, it's What's happening is the the hurricane has stalled for two or three days, so the the rate of rainfall is almost as great, but it's a, over a longer period of time. And of course, it's flatter in Houston or the, the, that, the Gulf Coast of Texas than it is that's, that's here right. in Hawaii. That's so nowhere to go, right? Yes, and um, so 
there's and it's 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 over a larger area, so you could see both were historical events. This was the um, um, highest amount of rainfall from a hurricane on record in the U.S. and uh, and and you could see also how it almost compares to Kauai because Kauai received. It's amazing that they received 28 inches of rainfall over a day uh, right. just this weekend, and that you could see how the impacts could be so and great I think on Kauai. We've got time also. for one more slide before the break, and I think that that slide okay, will show sure. us. Okay, sure. Um, okay. Here is the inside of one of the buildings. Right. Okay. So this is in Houston, and um, part of the problem in Houston was it's so flat. There's a lot of impervious surfaces, and uh, even if they only get one or two feet of flooding, there are a lot of uh, areas that are built below grade, and so they flood. So they may only get one or two feet of water at grade, but they'll have 15 or 20 or 30 feet of water That's inside the building. So this is a, a horrible example. It's a fine example, but a horrible situation, wherein what we're seeing is perhaps you know, 20 feet of the basement of this building yeah. was flooded. Yeah, and see, this is the typical way when a building floods, and this is, Kauai is probably going to be facing this now, is when a building floods, whether it be a building or a house, the first thing they do, they got to drain the water, and then they got to gut the walls to where the, yeah. um, uh, and what you see that in that picture is. Well, Dennis, I mean, th th this is a scary prospect, the hurricane hitting yes. Hawaii is all scary. We're getting near the break time, but when okay. we come back, I'd like to ask you, well, what can residents in Hawaii actually do to sure. sort of protect themselves? So let me just remind the viewers, you are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark, and we're talking about getting ready for hurricane season here with uh, Dennis Wan, who is from the Sea Grant College Program at UH Manoa. And we'll be back in about a minute, so join us then. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. And welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness Mark, and this week we're really talking about hurricane preparedness with Dennis Wan, who is a faculty member in the UH Sea Grant College program at Manoa. So, Dennis, yes. you've got several examples of the kinds of damage which can be done sure. by hurricanes. So let's zip through some of the other images which you brought us and just talk us through some of these. Okay, well, let's go through this quick. Uh, this just shows Houston after Hurricane Harvey, 300 thousand structures were flooded. And uh, the reason I wanted to put this one is when we saw the aerial photos of Kauai last this, um, over this weekend for the fl flooding, mm -hmm. we saw a lot of houses that had this type of flooding, shallow flooding. And you've got cost there, uh, 150, 330, that's thousand yeah. dollars. Right? Yes, yeah. and this okay. is a tremendous burden on a homeowner because they may still have their mortgage, then they have to pay rent because they need to move out of the house while it's being renovated, then the repair. And uh, the key lesson learned here, because later we're going to talk about strengthening houses, but no matter how strong you strengthen your house, still have insurance when it's when sure. it's appropriate. Right. And uh, many of these houses, 75% of the houses in Houston, Texas, did not have flood insurance. Okay, poor people. Important lesson. Uh, next slide. 
Okay, so here we're in Rockport, and you could see and there's... this is an aerial view yes. looking down on a little neighborhood, right? So yes. that circle or ellipse is a, a road. Yeah, that's a, a, a block, you know, a subdivision there. Hard to believe, yes. And um, uh, you could see there's four numbers there. There's uh, some houses that near number four were, were completely destroyed. Some, their number three, had um, moderate damage. Two had some damage, and one was virtually uh, untouched. So very interesting. Within a block, yes. there's a lot of variety. Yes, and it all has to do with how it's built or how what you could do with an existing house to make it stronger. All right. And you can show us in the next slides, I think. Yes, we're going to go this real quick. So, this so is that's the house that got destroyed. Okay, here's major damage, the next one, moderate damage, and here's one that had virtually no damage. Hard to okay. believe that they're so close to each other. Yes, and the key thing, again, is um, they found out that the ones that performed well had, has what's called a continuous load path and like window protection and a strong roof. Can, can, can you translate what a continuous path actually means for us, please? Yeah, maybe we could go to this. Sure, let's to. take a look. Okay. I always like to have a demo, what we have here. Okay, so this is like um, almost like what a house would look like. This is like a double wall house. Okay. This would be the, the roof, the truss or the rafter. And this is a double wall house. You could see the outside wall is like siding, and the inside wall would be like drywall. Yeah, yep, okay. Okay, so we're gonna turn this around. So a continuous load path ties through the building codes, it ties to the truss or the rafter of the roof to the double top plate, because if you don't have that tie, wind will lift it up and lift the roof off, okay? And then every, and then the double top plate is connected to the stud, and the stud is connected to the, to the base plate, okay? So this is like your uh, miniature house. All right, so okay. the base, pl base plate is the bottom of the right. house. Right, yeah. right, okay. okay? So what's happening is, um, uh, and we're gonna use Oahu as an example because Oahu and Rockport had the same style construction and they almost had the same history of building codes, okay? So what happened on Oahu in 88, there was no connection between the roof and the, and the top plate and the stud and the base plate, okay? In 88, they required hurricane clips and then in 95, they required what's called a continuous load path where everything is tied together. So, so this would be like structure number one yeah. where there was little damage. Well, if you, if you take these screws out, because this is going to be in the fourth edition of the book, huh. this is, these screws are actually supposed to represent what we call a retrofit. Okay? So um, if you take these screws out, it would have no connection, and that would be like that structure one. Yeah. But the house that performed well, uh, the, the one that had no damage, would have a connection. And typically, they're put in for um, while the house is being built, and they're hidden. But for an existing house, right. it's possible to retrofit them by drilling I, these I structural screws. I was going screws. to ask you, it's, you, you had ordinances in yeah. uh, the mid-90s, for example, but what about the poor person who built the house back in the 30s or 40s, for yes. example? So you can do some retrofit there. Yes, every house could be strengthened. It's hard to make a, an old house as strong as a new house, mm -hmm. but you make it stronger. It's like, it's like, it's hard to make a 60-year-old person as strong as a 30-year-old person, but you can make them stronger than they are now. Right. 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 Okay. So and we so there are retrofit options like this using the structural screws. Imagine they weren't there, then there would be no support. But you could add them as a retrofit. So this is for a double wall house, and there are things you could do for a single wall and house. And you mentioned also windows and things like that. You know, sort of, um, do you put shutters on to prevent them imploding, or, or yes. what's the plan? Windows are re window protection is very important. So um, if you don't have window, and masking tape will not work. So if you, um, 
don't have window protection, when there's a hurricane, there's not only the force of the wind, but there's debris in the wind, yeah. windborne debris will impact the window, break it, and once the window breaks, there's internal pressurization, and it doubles the uplift pressure on your roof, making it more likely to fly off. So I'm Not good. Yes, so in the book there's 12 different types of window protection we cover and there's going to be some new methods in the fourth edition of the book that we'll put out. Okay. Now you've also brought along something else here. Okay, sure. And, and, and tell us what this little gizmo is. Okay, maybe we could advance one of the, okay. Uh, okay, so we just talked about a double wall house, but this is a single wall house. And uh -huh. these are the houses that are the oldest ones in Hawaii, okay? okay. And they're most vulnerable to uh, hurricane impact. So you could see on the picture on the upper left, um, that's a house that's been retrofitted with hurricane clips. How do you feel clips. about the recent attack on Syria? Okay. And then Was it a success the picture on the right, a lot of Single wall houses are on co called what's on post and pier structures. They're very weak from a hurricane, force winds, or an earthquake because they don't they don't sit on. Um, they're not attached or just sit on the termite pan by friction. But in this picture, we actually retrofitted that to make the connection stronger. I see. And, and is this one of these retrofitted? Yes. One more picture, I guess, and that should do. Let me see, can we go to the, okay, there, there we go. go. So here we go, so those are the individual posts and piers. This single wall house in Pearl City is actually, each post has been retrofitted to tie down the post to the concrete block. And it's very easy, you could come back to our, it's very easy to uh, put these posts in and then you put the hole down there, and with this screw, you just drill a hole. If this is a 5 8 inch screw, you drill a 5 8 inch hole into the concrete, and you use an impact driver. It goes right in, and it holds okay. the post. And, of course, there's no guarantees that any of this will prevent all of the damage. Right. But at least in terms of wind damage and knowing what the drainage system is around the house as well, presumably, is really important. Right, right, yeah. yes. So um, this is one of the main activities that Sea Grant does, as I understand it, that you try and inform the general public. What would an interested layperson, how would they learn more about this? You've got the, the manual. How do they even get a copy of this manual? Okay, well, um, they could best to uh, just Google University of Hawaii Sea Grant, and they'll get to their uh, to their website, and their um, their they have a, a publication library. And this is the Hawaii Sea Grant College Program. Yes. Okay. Google and or they could Google Google Homeowner's Handbook to Prepare for Natural Hazards, and they could get a copy of the book. And it's it's a, a free PDF so, file. So so they can download a free version of this PDF. From anywhere, presumably. Right. And as soon as the fourth edition is finished, we'll print that out. And then, uh, like during emergency fairs or workshops, we'll give them out to the public for free. OK, OK. And I, I hope State Civil Defense knows all about this. So yes. It's done They're, in collaboration. They, they with are a I partner presume. in the book. Uh -huh. uh, Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, City and County, Hawaii Emergency Management, all the county emergency management and civil defense are partners in the book, as well as NOAA, National Weather Service. But, but the prospects are really scary if a big hurricane hits Honolulu. So I really do appreciate you coming on the show today, Dennis, just to give us a little bit of the background. Obviously, homeowners can't go away and immediately uh, prepare for the uh, June 1st season, right. but this really is food for thought. But sure. Just be prepared, folks, and uh, basically we'll uh, just keep our fingers crossed for this year as well. But unfortunately, Dennis, we've come to the end of the show run out of time again so let me just remind the viewers you've been watching think tech hawaii's research in manoa i've been your host pete mcginnis mark and my guest today has been dennis wan who is from the uh sea grant college program and we've been talking about hurricane season so you folks get ready because it's coming soon anyway join us again next week for another exciting show and so until then goodbye for now